Hi, good morning. I think it's still morning. It's about, about midday, so we're a little bit in between. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be here in the uh, warmth and the sunshine, actually. I spoke to my mum yesterday. She's in the northwest of the UK. It's white, it's snowy, it's freezing cold. And, um, but at the middle of this year, um, in the northwest of the UK, which is renowned for being cold and wet, it was above 40 degrees C. So this is a place where AC is just not a thing. Nobody has air conditioning. Everybody has central heating because it's freezing cold. But it's above 40 degrees C. So that was my own sort of personal wake-up call that it really is time to get moving on climate. And um, that's backed up by the statistics. So this is uh, 80 years of September's temperatures. And you can see baselined against the last 30 years, an average of the last 30 years. And you can see since 1990, really just how that's upticking. And we really are getting into, uh, you know, this year really is going to be extreme. It's going to be record land and sea temperatures. There's been wildfires in Canada affecting air quality in New York. So it really is uh, about time we, we kept moving. And the good news is that there is a lot of commitment, at least at the highest level. So this is how much emissions is covered by some form of commitment. If you look on the left, you'll see uh, January, sort of two, two and a half, three years ago. Um, uh, red means nothing's happening, so 45%. So 55% have some form of commitment or under discussion about net zero. Roll the clock forward uh, two and a half years and you're now at 92%. So only 8% of emissions are not covered by some form of commitment or under discussion. So that's the good news. But then the question is, actually, how, how do we do this? And uh, this is complex system change. So we spend a lot of time in the details. You've heard uh, a lot about that today. But it's really, how do we take a, a step back? Because you know, we need to move together. So we really need to understand this. Um, so really, the, the, this is a sort of uh, five-point plan. So step one, create a vision. Um, we're actually now at a point where we can do that. So net zero mid-century really helped us. It put a stake in the ground so we could all model and get our heads around it. And then what this chart shows you is there's about 14 different industries that need to decarbonize. So that's the most important 14 industries. On top of this is agriculture and land use. So we haven't modeled that yet, but that will be on top. But there's 14 different um, industries. And what you'll see there is the dotted line shows us where economics alone, so we call this our economic transition scenario, because clean technologies are just getting cheaper. So actually, we will be reducing if we just make economically sensible choices, but we'll be at 2.6 degrees C. If we actually want to bend that curve down to be Paris compliant, and that's where the 1.77 is, then we need to invest over and above that. And that's where you see that, see that glide path down. So we know um, statistically by sector how to decarbonize. You can then break that down by region. So in Europe, this is Europe's curve. So already more of a, a downward trend. Um, less economic growth in Europe, to be fair. This is what it looks like if you do it for India. So India is growing so rapidly that even economics will see a rise. So bending the curve is actually much, much harder. What you'll also see is a difference in the size um, of, of the uh, industry sectors. So here you'll see power is, is a huge piece, the blue at the top, and you'll see the growth in the industrial sector um, happening in the 2030s, 2040s. So we know um, what we're trying to do. We also actually know what a lot of the technologies are. So again, this is just a global chart, but what it shows you is of the emissions reductions, 51%, so half of it is clean power. So if we nail clean power, that's 50% of the task. Um, there's 23% is electrification, so that's electric vehicles, heating and cooling, etc. So that's another quarter. Um, then you get into you know, the industrial side of it, so hydrogen, bioenergy, CCS, um, between 5 and 10%, and then some level of recycling. Um, and in our modeling, we put a little bit of carbon removals that we just, we just had to have. But again, this varies by country, but it's not so dramatically different. So we know what the technologies are. Um, on the power side, it's going to be dominated by renewables. Again, whether you just do it rationally with economics or whether you really want to bend the curve, uh, renewables is going to be a big piece of the pie. And then you can also look by sector. So as well as geography, you need to also look by sector. So again, you can see 
um, a transition for road and rail that's going to be electrified. So the blue there is electricity. For aviation and shipping, you'll see it's sort of hydrogen and bioenergy. So those are the two dimensions to think about. So that's the vision. And we, we often underinvest in time in really understanding how the real economy needs to change. Point two then is about defining a plan. So we, so we really need a plan. If we know where we're heading, then we need a plan. And we break this plan down into four pillars. Um, pillar one, if you look on the left there, is accelerating what already works today. So again, there's a, a lot of talk about let's accelerate, but actually there are, you know, some things are mature and it's now pouring the money, the technology risk is low, the supply chains are there, they can scale. Uh, pillar two is actually about the things that are really um, being proven. Um, so things like hydrogen, CCS for a lot of other industries not enhanced oil recovery uh, is unproven. So these are really early stage. We need proof of concept and then we need to start scaling, um, you, you know, uh, do, do a few more of those projects before we really get into to scaling. Three is transitioning off uh, current, you know, coal and energy uh, carbon intensive industries. And four is then uh, a, a framework around it, an administrative framework, uh, policies around it. So we need to do all of those four things at the same time. So pillar one are these kinds of technologies. So I'm sure you've seen all these charts before. You know, the cost of wind, solar, lithium-ion batteries, you know, uh, plummeting. So they really are, you know, the cheapest form uh, of, of power. And, and, and you know, the, these are the things that we really should be uh, accelerating massively. And I know that's one of the discussions uh, at COP, which, uh, which is great to see. Um, and this, again, economics or net zero, we should be scaling these massively. So this just makes economic sense to really um, scale, particularly this decade is going to make the most difference. So that's an example of pillar one. Example of pillar two would be hydrogen. So this is the economics of green hydrogen. So that's the, the, the green curve you'll see. And what you'll see is actually it's about the 2030s that this becomes cost competitive um, with blue hydrogen. So that's um, hydrogen with CCS. And so this stuff, needs to be piloted, we need to bring the cost down, but it's not ready to scale out economically. So that's why we call it phase two type technologies. If you look, you know, uh, just one example, different industries will then have a share of green gas. So this is just saying where hydrogen could be used. So a lot in shipping and steel and um, where electrification. So buildings and roads, and that's all your EVs is gonna be electrification. So again, so you, you start to uh, be able to break out um, where those different technologies can be used. So that's, that's the plan. The, the other fourth, third piece is around stakeholders. Um, and uh, those are four different stakeholder groups we believe really need to be engaged to get uh, the transition moving. Um, we've talked a little bit about industry sectors already but we absolutely need government involved. We really need government. We need finance, we need finance of all flavors, and we also need civil society. We really need to bring people along with us. You know, in many places they vote for the governments anyway, so it's a sort of circular connection. Um, in terms of government, a good example of this is the Inflation Reduction Act. So, that, so the US really did pass uh, you know, a monster uh, uh, act last year, August of last year. That's the 369 billion, but it was on top of an infrastructure act that was already 80 uh, billion, and which already touched on a lot of energy infrastructure. So you see, um, you, you know, huge investment across actually a wide range of technologies uh, in in the ecosystem. And you can see we had to redo our numbers. We had to redo our predictions. The solid line is before the IRA. The dotted line is afterwards. And you can see you know, 10, 15 gigawatts a year that's been uplifted pretty quickly. So you know, by 2023, 20, 24, 25, you're already seeing significant uptick. And a lot of the focus was about manufacturing. And this is how much has, uh, went into manufacturing in the first year. This number is now over 100 billion. Um, and about three quarters of it has gone into battery manufacturing. But you can see how from August 22 when, when it started, just how much has been invested into uh, manufacturing in the US. So that's governments and what governments can do. And then there's finance, just, just to show a, a little bit on the finance side. Um, you know, these organizations produce uh, scenarios and forecasts. You can see that's the small text here. These are the different forecasts 
that different, these different organizations produce. You can actually work out what's, how much money is needed to implement, and each one of these blocks represents a scenario from uh, you know, either the IEA or NGFS or IPCC. And so you can see the blocks represent how many trillions per in the block, so what's that run rate, what's that annual, annual investment. Um, so you can really start to turn that into numbers, and what that tells you is what ratio of clean to fossil fuels is needed to really hit those plans. If you take an average, which is where the middle of that dotted line is, um, to date it's been less than one to one, so, so less than one clean dollar for every fossil fuel dollar that's gone in, and we need to get to a four to one, four clean for every one fossil. And the good news about ratios is, it doesn't matter how big or small your financial institution is, you can apply the ratio to your business and work out how you score on this. And it needs to be six to one and then 10 to one in the subsequent decade. So again, getting governments need to lean in, but financial institutions also need to lean in. And finally, we got to bring people with us. So we don't do much research on civil society, but we all know that this, uh, you know, we have to bring people with us. We're also part of this as well. We have to pay our energy bills, we have to buy our new vehicles or whatever. So we have to have something that works for civil society too. And then the fourth piece of it is about raising um, finances. So, you know, we're, we're going to need to, to invest more. And if you run the numbers, so again, so, so our ETS, so if we just invest in the cheapest clean technology, then it's already $120 trillion is going to be invested between now and mid-century uh, in these technologies. That's the chart on the left. Once, what's interesting is blue is demand side and green and gray is supply side. What's interesting is just how big EVs is a piece of this jigsaw. Um, and also how grids appear again to be a very significant piece uh, of, of the jigsaw. And on the right is net zero, so that's the 200 trillion. What you'll see is eat, whichever way you go, it's about 50-50 supply demand. And actually, despite everything that's going on in the world, there is a, there's a, a, a lot going on in the world right now, um, in, there's increasing investment. So we're now at $1.1 trillion into these clean technologies, up 31% last year, so again, you know, increasing. About 50-50 supply demand, and you can see there, the yellow is renewables, the green is electrified transport, you know, money's starting to flow into these sectors. But if you look at where that money is flowing, so you can just segment that by geography, 50% of 1.1 trillion is in China. So there really is one country that's investing massively in these clean technologies. The US is about 13% of that number, Germany's next, and they invest a tenth of what China is investing. And if you take the 1.1 trillion on the left there, so that's the, the chart you just saw, there is also another 470 billion going into other related areas. So the grid is getting some investment, 274 billion, also some uh, others on supply chain manufacturing and uh, in corporate finance, you know, IPOs, et cetera. But is that enough? So if you add the 1.1 to the grid, that's where you get the 1384 there. The chart on the left shows you where we are today. The bar next to it is where we need to be. So we need a, a three-fold, a 3x increase now in the financial flows into these technologies to get on track. It's then going to be uh, you know, seven and then uh, eight billion in terms of um, uh, a trillion in terms of uh, an annual run rate that we need to get to. So you can see how much that really, really needs to, needs to increase. So that's, uh, that's point four. Point five is this, actually. So we had a Vice President Gore come, come speak to our team, 300 people in London in the summer, and we sort of asked him, we said, how do you keep focused on this? How do you keep everybody on message? How do you keep everybody's spirits up as they work away at something that's actually very hard and uh, is difficult to make progress? His advice to everybody was, was get moving, and I think that's, uh, that's very, very appropriate. So that really is our five-point plan. Think about a vision, think about sectors and geographies. Define a plan, think about phasing, because not everything is ready to scale now. Make sure you engage all four stakeholders, because there are so many discussions that take place that have two of the four, and it's pretty obvious where the missing link is, and it, we're never gonna get there unless we really engage those four stakeholder groups. Raise money, this is not just for finance, this is government money, this is corporate investment, this is consumers paying more for, for something that's clean. And then, last but not least, get moving. All of us, thank you.